Okay, hello, bonsoir to the moon. Be ever bitch. I swear to God, if I get this wrong one more fucking time, I'm going to scream. Okay. Okay, hello, what's up to the moon? Bienvenue on YouTube channel Moi. This is your first time here. Hello, I am Blair of Shadow Book Con Shadow Book Conjure, CEO and founder of Shadow Book Conjure, where, bring where we bring you authentic Asian voodoo and the traditional magics of Southern Italy. If all if any of that sounds interesting to you, or if you just are interested in me, please stay watch, like the video, comment, subscribe, yes ma'am. Um, but th if this is not your first time here and you are a regular here, hello, mon chéri. I hope that uh, you are enjoying your day today and I hope that you will stay for this video. Okay? So, okay. Great. Did it. So, today we're going to be talking about a subject that is. You know, very controversial. Um, very controversial for neo pagans. Um, ain't that controversial for traditionalists because you know it never was an issue. This didn't become an issue until late. You know, like white people starting wanting to do magic again. But um, so today we're gonna be talking about love magic. Ooh, love magic. You know. You know, you know, like manifesting a relationship, manifesting a man, a woman, s wanting a specific person, you know, um, um, making someone love you back, you know, creating love, that whole, that whole concept, you know, because, you know, for a lot of neo-pagans especially, or just with modern witchcraft practitioners, there's this whole notion that you need to have quote unquote consent to be able to do love magic on a person. And you know, I just find that to be what are the what are the what are the words? Bullshit. Just utter old bullshit, but we'll get into that. <laughs> so um so today um I decided to put on my red garb, my good old red um, head wrap, because th this is my head wrap, but um, you know, I like having my hair out for these videos. But also, th this is a nice over thing, and plus, it uh, it disguises my chicken wings, so I don't have to cover I don't have to cover them up in editing. Editing. <laughs> um, okay, so. Love magic. So, in my practices in Stregriam and in Voodoo, we have very powerful love magics. Very powerful things that we can do to, one, kind of just manifest a partner, manifest love of any kind, um, to sweeten people up, to make people loyal, um, to save a marriage, to save a relationship, to fix a family, and things like that. But one thing that I definitely was taught from a very young age, like the first love spell that I ever did, and the first love spell that I ever um, really learned how to do, is something called a Strega Love Jar. And so what it basically is, is that you fill this jar with like things of love, and things like that, and then you put it in a petition that you basically write, um, you basically write the specifics of what you want your partner to have to the T. Like fully, like fully like uh, height, age range, 
zodiac signs that you would wa want them to be. Um, you have to literally like describe the person to it to every single aspect of, of the of your perfect partner. Put that in a jar, put some hot water into it, shake it up, um, shake it up every single day for 21 days, things like that. And girl, does that shit fucking work? Does that shit fucking work? Because, oh bitch, did it manifest me some men back then? <laughs> um, but, so, um, but something that I also, um, do often for clients is, you know, you know uh, stop their husbands from cheating, or stop their partners for ch uh, from cheating. Um, saving, of, saving, uh, saving marriages, things like that, like, like making the other woman go away, or things like that, or full on just like snatching a man, snatching a woman, things like that. Um, and I, I, I've, I've, I've come across conversations, and I've had, you know arguments and debates with, you know, Wiccans, with Wiccans and Neo-Pagans and, um, modern witches that, that, that tell me that what I do is wrong because the notion of love, of, of doing love magic to someone who doesn't want to get worked on is the equivalent of spiritual this word because I don't want to I don't want to get in trouble for saying it but spiritual this and no <laughs> just no like I don't know how you could equiv like make the equivalent of that when um just no Cause like I've had I've had Wiccans and and, uh, wit and neo witches nowadays say to me like, well you wouldn't want someone working on you right? You wouldn't want someone doing that without your permission. Like if you don't want to be with someone, then you shouldn't. Then they shouldn't do that to you. And I'm like, well, that's what protections are for. Like with everything that, that I've had placed on me for protection wise. Ba baby, a, a love spell ain't gonna do shit. Unless it's like a, a major one, a love spell ain't gonna do shit to me. But if I want to make someone that I'm attracted to attracted to me. So here's the thing about love magic that a lot of that a lot of people don't understand. It is possible, but very hard to make a complete and total stranger complete and total stranger like if i know him but he don't know me he don't know nothing about me don't have never had a full any type of conversation with me it is it's possible but very difficult to just suddenly make him love me like me at, 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 in any sort of way for love magic to be the best it can be, there has to be already some type of connection there. There already has to be some type of a relationship standing. Like, majority of the time, it isn't just like, like, it isn't just like me being like, ooh, he's cute, he's trade, I want that. Let me just go, let me go find out his name and take a picture of him. And let me go do some some travail on him. No. No. And I've even and I've even had clients come to me and be like, hey, so I am really, I really like this dude. I really like this guy. And I really, really want him to like me. And and I really want to go out with him and be with him and things like that. And I think it would be great. I'm like, oh okay, okay. Um, how do you know him? What's your relationship with him like? Uh, is he flirting with you? And she's like, oh, he don't even know my name. He don't know your name? So what do you want me to do? Well, make him like me. And I'm like, girl, I can't. <laughs> I don't think many people could. Like, 
you, first of all, magic don't do, uh, oh, oh, this is a whole other, other conversation, but I'm gonna just say it real quick. Um, magic ain't the cure-all, bitches. Spirit ain't gonna just do everything for you. Like, that us, there's a reason why it's called, like, it's called, um, chavai. There's a reason why it's called trabajo and embrujaria. There's reasons why it's called work. Because yes, you're asking spirit for aid to help in this, but you got to do shit. You actually need to do shit, mama. You actually need to, you know, go up to that man, introduce yourself, let him know who you are. You need to actually do shit. Like, like especially like when it comes to like money magics and things like that. People be really thinking that these spells just make shit appear. And yes, there's manifestation, but manifestation takes time and work. Manifestation takes time, work, energy, effort. Like you actually have to go out, work. You actually have to go out, get the lottery ticket, things like that. But like with love magic especially, you actually have to like become friends with this person first. Like... I've, I've seen horror stories of people be like, oh my God, I did this spell on this man because, you know, I'm so shy to actually say hello. I want him to go say hi to me first because I know that if I do a love spell on him, then at least, like, he's going to automatically start having his eye on me and things like that. And <laughs> that wouldn't be a love spell to do. That would be a communication working. That also would be a communication working on yourself as well because you need to want to do you you need to want to speak more is what I'm trying to say um, but to do things on someone that you don't even that they don't even know you girl it's not it's not necessarily unethical and moral it's just that it's not gonna work <laughs> it's not gonna work because if you're spending all this money to get these supplies or get someone to do it for you, and girl, it's not going to work because relying on everything to happen to make spirit do everything for you, to make the magic do everything for you, girl, that's not how this works. That's never how it's, this has worked. Ever. You want something done, you can ask spirit for help, yes, but you also have to do shit. You also have to like put in the work and do shit. I mean, that's just a universal idea in, in magic and things like that. You want something to happen? You want something to happen? Ask spirit for help. Yes, do magic. But you gotta do shit for yourself too, Miss Thing. You want a job? Yes, yes. Put, uh, put some spell work on your shoes. Put some spell work on your hands. Do a money jar. Do a money jar. Do a, do a job working. Do a job candle. Hire someone to do to do so, to do a, a lamp for you. But you still gotta go out and um and uh look for the job. You still you still need to uh, give people your resume. You still need to go out and apply for these jobs. You can't just expect to light a candle and boom, someone calling and be like. I don't know you. I've never, I've never known you. But you know, I was just, I just randomly got this idea to, to call this number and give you a job, Mama. That's not how this works. <laughs> that's never how this works. I don't know who, who was out here teaching motherfuckers that this is Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, where you're, where you're just gonna randomly find a fucking five dollar bill on the street and they'll, and then go get the golden ticket. I mean, has that happened? Yes, but. That's not how this usually works. You're not the special case where spirit just decides to do everything for you. You're, that's very rare. But you really need to learn to do things for yourself. Anyways, I'm going off topic. I'm going off topic. Um, love magic requires you to actually have like a, a, a sort of a connection with the person first. Like, at least the basis of friendship. At least the basis of that. Um, and, like, for instance, when it comes to, like, saving a relationship. If you guys have just broke up, 
you can easily fix that. If you guys have been broken up for a month, it's a little bit more difficult. If y'all have been broken up, broken up for a year, girl, it's impossible. Well, not impossible, improbable. Because then you have to do extra, extra, extra shit to re-spark the ashes of love. Because you have to look at love as a flame, as a life itself. Because if you are trying to feed a fire that doesn't exist, when you when when you when you want to feed a fire that doesn't exist, and you're just throwing wood and powders onto bare land, nothing's gonna happen. That's what happens when you go after someone who doesn't know you. If you become friends with someone and have some form of a connection with them, there's a little fire, because you know, because you know, if we like someone, as in like. As in like a friend, we still have that little flame because that's what all of our connections are. They're fight, they're flames. People that mean something to us, people that are like acquaintances and everything like that, we all have a flame for them. That's also what a cord cutter is for. Because that flame is kind of like a cord as well. We get this connection to them and then if we want that shit to go away, we, we cut that shit. We extinguish that flame. But anyways, you need that small little flame. You need that flame to, to, to do anything with. So you at least need to be friends with them. And then, say you want to really amp up, amp, uh, amplify that, <clears throat> first do a sweetener. First get you guys going on a good thing. Make sure that you guys enjoy each other. Or at least that they enjoy you. And then, and then if, if, if you need to push it further, um, oh, no, but do the sweetening work because then you start connecting more with them in person where you will have to, um, you know, actually speak to them and actually try to, to socialize with them. You have to put in the work to make that connection because then the fire will start getting, will start growing. And then say you want to finally make it into a relationship. That's when you do like a new love work. You don't use the color red, you use the color pink. Because that's also another thing. I've been seeing people out here using the color red because you know that red is the color of blood and the color of the heart. And people be always using red as for red roses and ooh, child, no. Mm -mm. Red roses, yes. Uh, should you use pink roses instead for new love? Yes. For new love or love that isn't based in marriage, you need pink. You need to use the color pink. Because you know, I don't know when red became the color of love. I don't know if it just is because the, 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 the heart is represented for blood. I don't know. But red is more of a color for passion. So if you want to use sugar daddy for, for some of that, getting a sugar daddy, if you're a sex worker, um, if, if you are trying to rekindle old love, yes, red would be proper for you. But also red is for things, so red, you also have to think of blood. Red is protection. Red is ferocity. Red, you know what? I'm gonna have to make a whole other, I'm gonna have to make a whole video on the colors of magic. Well, not the colors of magic. What colors mean in magic? Stay tuned. <laughs> so red is more for things that are old and things that are strong already. So when I have a client come to be like, I've been with my man for 20, I've been with my man for 20 years. Things are just not going good right now. They seem off, help. I'm like, gotcha sis. And then I do everything red. And that re-sparks an old big fire, re-sparks the whole thing. But with new love, you need pink. 
because pink is more dainty. Pink is more fragile. Pink has more of that energy of that honeymoon phase, the, the scent of sweetness. That scent of sweetness is what key is what starts off that love. And so you have to do a pink candle, pink, um, um, pink roses, um, and things like that, because that is for new love. But say, okay, okay. So uh, people are going to want me to speak on this as well. So besides the fact that you need a connection to do that, what is it wrong that if you know that you that you've asked someone out multiple times, have tried with them multiple times, and they just keep saying no, is it ethical and moral for you to then do a working on them? Okay, so uh, editing Blair here. Um, I don't like what I'm about to say, so I'm gonna just delete that and just explain it myself right now. Um, majority of love workings are based more on persuasion than on going against someone's free will. So yes, there's workings that do get rid of free will, like obsession workings and love bindings, that those are two that I don't do. But the main thing is that majority of love workings, the average love working is not so much about taking away someone's free will and forcing some forcing someone to do things that they don't want to do. Yes, do those type of spells and those type of workings exist? Yes. Have I done them? Yes. But um they were never about they were never about like really truly forcing someone to do something that they don't want to do. It's more about persuasion and more about helping someone give you a chance. It's more about hey see my inner beauty, see the real me, because I want to make sure that the reason why you don't want me is not this bizarre reason, you know? Um, that you just are just like, meh, meh, I don't know. Yeah, so majority of love workings are more about persuasion rather than really forcing someone to do something that they don't want to do. So again, do I think it's moral? Do I think it's ethical to put a love working on someone that doesn't necessarily want to give you a chance, that doesn't want you. Um, I think it is. I think it's more, I think it's ethical because it's just the same thing as perfume, makeup, and wearing good clothes. You know? It's the same thing as making you look appealing to someone so that they can give you a chance. It's persuasion, you know? I mean... True, truthfully, like deep down, if someone doesn't want you, why would you want them? You know, if someone doesn't want you, why would you, why would you want them? Why would you go through the effort of doing all that? But you know what? Life is life. So there. We persuade things all the time in our lives and we manifest things all the time in our lives. But the, the key, the key thing though, is that Magic is just an aid. Love magic and spirit helping us with love, that's just an aid. If you want to attract someone, you're going to, you're going to need to present yourself and really connect with that person in a proper way. And to make them see the inner beauty within us. Because usually when you can see someone's inner beauty, that's when you start falling in love with them. But yeah, um, love magic is something that's always worked. It's been around for a long time and hell, you don't think that a wedding is the most potent of love magics. Putting a ring on each other, vows, girl, that's a love spell. Um. Love magic is not bad. It is not left-handed work. If anything, it's right. Love magic has always been there. It's always going to be here. And it's something that you need to learn about. Because if you do get love magic thrown at you and you don't want it, 
if you truly don't want it, learn to take it off of you. Learn the signs to show that, that you have love magic on you. But if you want to cast a spell because you like someone, do it. The only love magic that I will truly say is a crock of shit is self-love magic. Because I'm gonna be real honest, there is no amount of anything that you can that you can light a candle, that you can do a sweetening jar, that you can do a lamp that you can do a pot working, any type of working. There is, unless you want to give yourself narcissism, maybe, where you look into the mirror and you're like, ooh, yeah, mm. But it, there is no amount of magic that is going to, that you can do. There's no amount of candles that you can light, nothing that you can do that is going to make you love yourself. Because that requires you to work through your traumas. That requires you to, to do everything. The true self-love magic is healing work. Is shadow work. The love magic of every other kind. Even though I really recommend that people don't do obsession work. Or love bindings. Because that shit gets dangerous. Every other type of, every other type of love magic besides self-love. That it's possible, it can be done, and do it. Really, just do it. It ain't it ain't that fucking it ain't that big of a deal. It really ain't. It really ain't. If you want a man, if you want a woman, if you want a partner, and you and it's not you don't necessarily have someone specific. Do a man, do a love drawing and come to me. A, um, a manifestation jar. But if you want that specific person and you have a genuine relationship with them, like a, like a good old friendship, do it. Okay. So that's it for, so that's it for today, y'all. Um, this, vi this video was a bit longer because, you know, I had a rant in the beginning, but if you enjoyed today's video, I would highly appreciate it if you guys liked, commented, subscribed. Um, let me know how what your feelings on love work are. Uh, what your what your feelings of love work are. Um, let me know your prior experiences with love work. Tell me what um, your what your favorite love herb is. Um, and I hope that you guys are enjoying the, the videos that I'm putting out. Um, so yeah, if you would like, if you are interested in my products and my services, please, uh, visit my website down below, shadowbookhunter.com. And if you want to, uh, uh, f follow me and follow my journey, um, please, uh, visit my Instagram and give it a, um, give it a follow at shadowbook underscore conjure. Uh, link in the bio, uh, link in the, the, the down pages down there. But yeah, I hope you all have a good, uh, morning, night, afternoon, um, day, week, month, and year. Um, stay safe, stay warm, and wear a fucking mask, bitches, okay? Au revoir.